Hey guys, welcome back to another tying video with Old Florida. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be tying a classic. This is going to be a faux bucktail clouser minnow. First thing I'm going to do is start with my hook in the vise. I'm going to take my thread, start it right behind the eye of the hook, start with a really nice tight thread base, and I'm going to stop probably around a hook eye in front of the point of the hook. And I'm going to move my thread back just a hair. So when we tie these eyes on, which is going to be our next step, we're going to tie them pretty far back on the shank of the hook. Most of the time, I like the outside of the diameter eyes probably around two and a half full lengths back on the shank of the hook. This just gives us a lot of room to work with up here on the top of the hook for the material to grab on. It's a little bit easier to tie. It doesn't leave as clean of a head. But to me, it's just a lot easier to tie when you move those eyes further back. So I'm going to start securing those eyes with a whole bunch of X wraps and parachute wraps. Giving ourselves a really, really strong tie-in point for the eyes. We need to make sure these are anchored in and they will not spin. If you want, after you do two or three little securing wraps, when you get the eyes on there, you can add a touch of glue and then just go ahead and wrap over the glue. Loctite gel works really good, or CA thin or medium work pretty good also. Alright, so once we got our eyes tied in, I'm going to go ahead and move my thread to halfway between the eye and the eyes of the hook. Next up, we got our faux bucktail. This material is a synthetic material. It is similar to bucktail, but it's not natural and it's not hollow, so it doesn't quite do that same flare that natural bucktail does. But it's a lot more durable, and to me that's such a bigger positive than the little bit of extra movement that you get with natural bucktail. But for this purpose, synthetic bucktail is going to be our choice. I'm going to go ahead and cut a good little clump off of that patch. This is pretty thick. Ideally, I want maybe half the thickness of a pencil. It's kind of hard to gauge, but once you get a feel for it, you'll know exactly what you're looking for. If it's too thick, it's gonna look a little strange. If it's too thin, it's gonna look way too sparse. There is definitely a sweet spot, so take your time in choosing the amount of material that you put on the hook. So once I got the tips kind of looking aligned, I'm gonna go ahead and measure how long I want this fly. To me, I want probably an inch and a half to two inches out the back. I'm going to measure exactly where I want at the eye, take it all in my fingers, and I'm going to make one or two nice sweeping cuts so I have everything cut nice in my hand. And then I'm a lefty, so I tie with my bobbin going away in my left hand. I'm going to take this material and put it on the side of the shank of the hook closest to me, and I'm going to let my thread bring that material all the way over the top, if you could see that. So I tied it closest to me and I worked the material with my bobbin. As I pull back on this material, I'm letting it slide right behind. I'm pulling that material back so it's going right past the eye of the hook. So once we got that secured down, I'm gonna make some really tight securing wraps. It's actually okay if you lose some material, if you didn't tie it down all the way. It does happen, so don't feel bad if you do that. Once I got those really tight securing wraps all the way to the eye of the hook, I'm going to take this material, I'm going to lift and pull down, and with my thread I'm going to pull down really tight right behind the eyes. So now we're going over the eyes. As you can see, I got a little stray piece in there. That bothers me. Let's get that out of there. All right, so as we tie back behind the eyes, we're lifting up on that bucktail, keeping it on the technically underside of the fly, but on the top of the shank of the hook, I guess. So these are gonna be seen, these wraps. So make them nice and pretty looking. I like to wrap just a wrap about to where the st hook starts to bend. And I'm gonna take my thread and move it in front of the eyes in between both eyes. Now we could come in here with our crystal flash. I have 
three pieces that I'm going to just fold over, make a V. They're all different lengths. I'm going to fold them over on my thread, make a V, pull up, and then secure them backwards. I'm just going to go ahead and push them around the shank of the hook, around the point of the hook, sorry. And once we got that, they're just going to hang out there for a little while. Same thing, I'm going to move my thread right back in between both of those eyes. And now I'm going to grab my top color, which is purple. We're going to go ahead and just try to match up identically how much material we put in the first time. Which I think I did the first try, which is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off the batch. Alright. Same thing, I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to put that right next to the fly. Measure it against the black material. I'm going to go ahead and pinch right where I think I'm going to need to cut that. Same thing, make a nice sweeping cut once you have all that in your hand. I'm going to tie that in the same exact way. I'm going to put it in the side closest to me. It's a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. So two or three nice, kind of loose-ish loose, loose -ish securing wraps. And then you can just manipulate that material right around. And then you could go ahead and pull back to where that material is just captured right behind the eye of the hook. So there's no trimming at the end. I like to put those wraps pretty far tight behind first, and then I'll wrap forward. And then I'm going to go ahead and cover all those thread wraps. It doesn't build the best head with this material because it doesn't have any give. Natural bucktail will actually give a little bit and cinch down. This material won't. So after we have that, we're going to go ahead and just put a couple whip finishes. You do end up with a pretty thick thread head, which I know some people really don't like. To me, it's totally okay. I mean, this is a really durable fly. You can catch multiple fish, like I said, and not worry about it. That's going to be the done fly. I'm just going to lift that material up and let it naturally fall right in between the point of the hook. And then you can kind of manipulate it with your finger a little bit, get it where you want. And this is the done fly, a super simple little bucktail, faux bucktail clouser. As you can see, that thread head's pretty big, but I actually like to throw a little bit of hardest hole right on the top of this. This pattern is a super simple pattern, mix and match colors, basically fill a whole box with these in different weights, sizes, and colors. To me, a black and purple number two, baby tarpon, snook, little backwater fish. Pretty much anywhere where you want to throw this, you will probably catch a fish. This is a deadly bass fly, peacock fly. So give it a shot. You'll fish this for a really long time before it pops off or gets damaged. And with that being said, we hope to see you guys in the water, and thank you for watching.